Other people had been suggested for the role and, and unbeknownst to me, the elders had said, no, 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 it's got to be somebody from this area, which I wasn't. I'm actually Ngāti Pro, but my dad is from Ngāpuhi and uh, Ngāti Hinu. And uh, so when they, my name came to the mix, I said, yes, he's the one. He's a direct descendant of Honeheke, which I didn't know. <laughs> and, uh, it's fascinating to be part of that history is to think, oh, you're doing something really historical. And especially when we did the signing of the treaty where he was the first one to sign the treaty and he muttered the immortal words, we are one people and all that sort of thing and think, wow. And we had a huge attendance there because apart from all the actors and the extras who were there on the, on the actual Waitangi grounds when he filmed that historical scene, there were a whole lot of tourists as well all watching it. And so I thought, wow, this, must, this is I'm creating history here. This is great. I was brought up on a farm, but I'd never ridden a horse. So I had to be taught to ride a horse. And unbeknownst to me, I was taught on a racehorse, and on an ex racehorse, which I never knew about, which was great training for me. And I never knew it was a racehorse until one day the, the, uh, the wrangler said, look, take him down the bottom of the paddock, turn him around, just gallop him back towards me. I turned him around. I saw the ears pinned back and I thought, oh my God, I'm in deep trouble. I'm sure this horse is going to do something. Sure enough, it took up at full gallop and I saw a fence coming. I thought, what would be the instruction? What would be? Yes, that's right. Pull, 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 pull. So I pulled either side and this thing reared up and everything. And, and she said, well done. You've done everything we need to do. The horse is reared up. You've galloped on the horse. You didn't fall off. <laughs> but it was exciting but scary at the same time. It was the first time I'd ever been waxed completely. I thought, oh God, is this, is this what people have to go through for a film? Wax under the arms, wax wherever there was hair showing. They said, why are you waxing me when you've, I've got this big long thing on? And they said, I oh, don't know, no, that comes off. They said, I'm not going nude, am I? <laughs> I said, no, no, and down to a pair of knickers. But I had to lose a lot of weight. And that was something new for me too. That we, we need you to look really skeletal for this film. So that was the stage I was going through. I'd just given up smoking. <laughs> And then everybody said, you're going to be fat. And then I did it the opposite direction. I discovered running. So then I was into running and running and I got so thin. I said, that's perfect. But they still had to add all these little ribs and bones and things to make me look really... And I, I can't believe it. And I saw the film about three years ago, how thin I was. And I had to sit in a boat all day in a beautiful lagoon while all the crew all sitting in the water in a big, deep lagoon. And come lunch, I said, oh, I can jump. They said, no, 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 no. You're going back to have lunch. You're going back to shore to have lunch. When we come back here, you're not allowed in the water. We're not going to have to remake you up. So it was really fun. That was the most frustrating part of it, is to sit there for a whole day while everybody's in and out of the water having a wonderful time. And I had to sit there in the shade and all this makeup sweating. And, uh, and it wasn't until the end of the day they said, OK, you can jump in now. So I jumped in and they said, come on, time to go back now. I actually only worked on it for three mornings, so I had no idea what the rest of the film looked like or what anybody else was doing in the film because I was actually working with the opera company at the time. So I had to squeeze my stuff into three, three mornings. Lee, Lee Tamahori was, was cutting as he was going. I remember we had a whole sequence with the, with the boys and I had to train these boys to, to, to do, the, do this, um, this, 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 this haka. And they practiced this huge long thing. And we got through it and Lee, and they were halfway through it and Lee said, right, cut. Okay, we're on to the next scene. And they say, but sir, we, we got the whole, no, no, I'm cutting there. He said, no, no, I, just move on, come on, come on, just go. So it was, he was cutting it in his head as he was going. And he said, no, I don't need that. We just jump back and cut onto this. All I want is that little bit. Yes, do those lines. Yep, fine, that's enough. And I thought, wow, he must have, good, must have a really good vision in his head of what was coming up. And obviously he did. It's the first time I ever watched a film that I didn't cringe at seeing myself on television because usually I get a little gored. Oh, I can see the acting there. I can see what's happening there. But this time I got so carried away. I thought, wow, this is amazing. It's just the whole impact of the thing on the thing. Uh, and I know there was a lot of um, uh, controversy here amongst some Maori people who said, oh, this is putting us in a bad light, whatever. And at the time, I was touring with the whole lot of Australians who said, oh, mate, that happens in Kalgoorlie. It's exactly the same sort of thing. It doesn't matter about the colour of the skin or whatever. It's exactly the same. And then we toured in Canada with the play, and the locals were saying the same thing. He said, no, that happens here. It's exactly the same. So obviously it was a universal... Lee must all, and the writers hit on a universal theme. First time I'd come up against downsizing, within one week. I was on the first day of the shoot, and... Um, we had 
Mr. Makoali's caravan, Mr. Morrison's caravan, uh, caravan for, for the male um, feature ones, the caravan for the female feature ones, and all this huge crew. One week later, I came back, Mr. Mr. Morrison's caravan, that was it. The rest of you are in a tent. I said, what happened? What good, what happened? He said, oh, a bit of downsizing is going up. And where there were, I think there were about 30 or so horse riders out in Tuakau, I think, where we shot the first part of it. By the time we got to Coromandel, we managed to shoot the other, but it was down to about 10 going round and round in circles, <laughs> which was, I thought was quite fascinating. Oh, I was an old codger and I was getting used to being old codgers and it was my first experience of um, there's some new makeup technique which they put latex all over you and then then attacked you with a blow dryer <laughs> and, blow, and they put latex on and then they you skip the face and they blow dry your whole face then they go do this <laughs> so everything goes wrinkle up and I go wow so that was that was a whole new experience for me it was the first time I came across fantastic location food. Because well, my first day was shooting on, on the second unit. With the second unit, I said, oh, you'll be shooting second unit the first day. And, um, you know, it was second unit. So I said, yeah, fine, okay, there'll be pie under a tree somewhere or, and a bit of a hot dog. So I had good, healthy breakfast before I left. Turned up there. Eggs Benedict, salmon, filet I mignon. Mean, breakfast. This is breakfast on the second unit. And the second unit crew was just as big as the first unit crew. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. I suppose they had two children. There was a little girl and the young boy. And the little girl was going to deliver all the lines. And she was fine until the take. And they said, an action. <coughs> and she just performed and she refused to do anything. So they said, what are we going to do? And the little boy said, I know her lines. So the little boy delivered all her lines. My, it, the daughter was suddenly gone and I, had, I only had a little son I had to say farewell to and be zapped by, I think, um, Michael Hurst turned evil or something and zapped me into the air. And... Oh, no, he was great. He was lovely to work. He was so helpful and was with you all the time and fed you and gave you the lines and even did, did off-screen stuff for you, which apparently in Hollywood they don't do. <laughs> you know, you go, you're... You go to your trailer, once you finish seeing, you go to the trailer, the minions come on and read the lines for you, or you talk to a cross on the corner of the camera. Nice to the Garden of Spain, I'm the dad who gets, who is shocked when he finds out his son bets for the other team, who, who supposedly was turning up through the, with his wife and happy family relationships and everything going on and on and on, and finally the pressure's got too much for the son, and he comes up and he breaks the news to to his parents and sends me into chocks and what have you. Don't want to know you anymore. Don't want to know you, you're not my son, blah, 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 blah. And so the son thinks, fine. But I softened it. I shouldn't say anymore really, because that might give it away. <laughs> and I had a scene in there which everybody said to me, and a friend of mine, Bruce Phillips, is also in it playing Susan Sarandon's husband, playing the father. And he had a letter saying, you're out. We've we'll cut you out completely and all I saw was a photograph. And I said, well, I haven't had a letter yet. And I had a little scene with Rachel Weiss in the, in the vineyards or in the apple orchard. And I thought, wow, well, I must go and see this film. I went to see it the other day and I thought, there I am. And there she is reading a letter. Oh, oh, it's become a voiceover. <laughs> so that's <laughs> my little scene was cut out of that too. So you have, you're, you're not in charge of what you yeah. You're at the mercy of somebody else. We're the ones, really, we are the heroes. We are the good people, really, the, us bad guys, because we had to scratch and claw our way up from the gutter, you know? You know, we had to work, make our way through life, scheme and conspire and collude with everybody in sight to, to get to where we are. And we've, you know, we've jumped the hurdles all through life and we deserve to be where we are. People are just in the way. And anybody who gets in the way, you know, you just feel hard done by. And of course, the villains of the people, uh, are the ones people always remember. 